Good morning and welcome back to another round of our uh, Mount Sinai CCC live peripheral live webcast. Uh, my name is Roman Sharma. Today is December 16th for our final session uh, in 2021, the year that has been plagued by COVID yet once again. We have our final session uh, led by our, our um, uh, director, Dr. Krishnan, Dr. Guja uh, in the lab today. Uh, we thank you again for joining us for the whole year. Uh, as as always, it's been uh, it's always a, a a wonderful experience sharing our live cases and our educational materials with with every uh, one of you. And we look forward to joining you as well next year uh, with our first live case of 2022 uh, on January 26th. Uh, and uh, with that, I uh, hand it off to Dr. Krishnan and okay. the rest of the team. Good morning, Roman. Thank you so much for the kind introduction and uh, welcome everybody to our uh, final live case of the year. As you know, uh, this has been an incredible year in terms of, uh, you know, all the all the difficult things that we've gone through. But I think everybody's pulled it pulled through in a wonderful manner. But most importantly, I think education continues and I think education continues here at Mount Sinai. And we're so happy today to have uh, Dr. Rami Tadros. Uh, who's the associate professor and program director of our vascular surgery residency here, along with multiple other titles. But more importantly, just a real dear friend of ours and somebody who we've worked collaboratively for many, many years together. As you know, all of you know, Rami headed the aortic course along with Dr. McKinsey uh, here as part of NYEVS, which was a huge success. Did a phenomenal, phenomenal, and we still talk about it, dissection case uh, that was still talked about and a lot of people have viewed it on, on YouTube and other channels. Uh, so it's a real pleasure to have have him with us. Uh, he's to my right. Uh, as all of you know, he's been here multiple times. To his right is Dr. Karthik Guja, uh, who doesn't uh, need introduction. Again, is one of our co-directors. Uh, to his right is Twinkle, Twinkle Singh. And I'm sorry, Rami, your fellow's name, forgive me. Anthony. 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 Dr. Who, Turner. Dr. And Dr. Anthony Turner, who's one of our vascular surgery fellows and, and for, for third year or, or fifth He's year? graduating. Graduating, my goodness. So any, anybody out there who needs an excellent vascular surgeon, Anthony is available and, of course, more importantly, incredibly well-trained. Behind us is Ray Lascano, uh, who's our interventional nurse practitioner. Elizabeth Holton, our, our, our nurse. Habib, our tech, uh, Damien's on vacation. And, and now we're ready to get, get started with this great case, uh, which I think is really going to show all the nuances of, of something that, that can really be done in the appropriate person uh, in a percutaneous manner in a safe and effective way. So without further ado, Twinkle, uh, go ahead and get started with the presentation. Let's do an aerogram, guys. Uh, hello, everybody. So our today's case is um, a 61-year-old male. Uh, he presents with exertional bi uh, bilateral hip pain and also symptoms of Lerich syndrome for the past few months. Uh, he also has lifestyle-limiting claudication, uh, Rutherford class 2 and category 4. Uh, his past medical history is significant for high blood pressure and uh, hyperlipidemia, uh, coronary artery disease, and PAD. St already has had SFA intervention before. Uh, he's on, currently on aspirin, statin, plavix, celostazole, and uh, metoprolol. And despite all the medical therapy, he continues to have um, uh, symptoms. His pertinent labs are uh, hemoglobin is 13.2, platelets 201, INR 1.2. His ABI is 0.71 on the right side and uh, 0.62 on the left. And uh, he got an arterial duplex that was suggestive of bilateral uh, aortoiliac and SFA disease. So this is uh, the uh, first uh, DSA of distal aortic uh, that we got initially, and you can see a very focal, uh, significant occlusion uh, at the at the level of distal aorta infrarenal. So uh, the distal uh, the distal runoff on both sides was essentially normal. And this, as you can see there. And then we obtained a CTA um, that showed a focal near complete occlusion of the distal abdominal aorta. And as you can see there, the proximal vessel reference and distal vessel reference diameter around 1.5. And it's all infrarenal, uh, potentially a soft plaque and some calcification. So uh, that's the case. And now we'll show you the pictures that we are uh, getting right now. Okay, so so I think I think it's very important. I think before we start, before I, I'm just taking some diagnostics, as we can imagine, 
we're all, we're trying to get this patient in at five in the morning and travel and all that stuff. For those of you who do cases like this, you know how it is. They're just trying to show both legs. Actually, it might be yeah, better to show both legs because yeah, they're going to see both. Do this thing here. Yep, you're right there. It's perfect. So, so, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about is, and ask as Dr. Tadros, uh, you know, when you look at these type of uh, CTs and in, in this type of preparation for this case. What do you what do you what do you think, Rami, in terms of what 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 is the pre-op preparation for these cases that that you'd be able to see uh, prior to what information that you're going to need prior to planning such a case? The SFAs are open, and we know we've yeah, got the yeah. CTs below the knee. Okay. Yeah. So I think number one is the CT scan or CT angiography uh, or an MRA. You know, I think angle, that, angle guy. I think you need axial imaging to assess. The plaque the assess the soft lumen. Uh, for example, in this patient, just looking at the angiography, you would think that this is just a calcific lesion. But when you actually look at the axial imaging, you can see that there's either mural thrombus or soft plaque there. Uh, that's that's, that's <coughs> really creating the luminal obstruction. So I think axial imaging of some kind, preferably CTA. Right. Uh, that that helps in terms of case planning as well. Not just understanding the lesion, but Determining the diameters of the so aorta. Set the table up for the uh, aorta ram shot. The infrarenal aorta, as well as the aorta right above the, the bifurcation. Uh, in this case, for example, the infrarenal aorta is measuring 14 millimeters, no, no, but no. then down right. at the aortic bifurcation, right. it's measuring closer to 12. To uh, and so, 11 to 12. So, that all that information is gathered from the CT scan. So, so I, I think that's important. Also, now, you know, we've given a lot of dyeing, and I think having good equipment is good. So I think this table here, this Phillips table, will show you. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna, gonna to use that aerogram shot to line up our, 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 our catheter so we don't have to do another full shot in order to be able to cross this lesion. So, so one of the things you can do with, with these newer tables is actually get to that particular picture. So this way, when you look at it, you're right at that picture when, when you want to cross. Ray, can we bring the, 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 uh, the, the floral image. mask on as well or no? So what we're going to do now is bring the floral mask to this. Uh, no, no, I'm saying oh, right on top of this, but you need the picture, right? You need the picture and then do the uh, roadmap. So we had it already. Okay. So what, one of the things you need to do is so now we can actually overlay the roadmap onto this so we don't have to give no, no, a lot of contrast <clears throat> and it's, 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 it's part of the the actual the, the beauty of these kind of tables which gives you the ability to be able to do this let's see if we can pull it off we don't have the technician here but normally we'll be able to there you go freeze that and roadmap that so this way you don't have to mess with this plaque as dr tadro said you're, you're able to do the smart you mask sure you and you're able that? to just go forward with it so you can see here there's your there's your smart mask and of course, Karthik and Rami are going to laugh because I'm blind. I'm not going to be able to see this. But it doesn't matter. Here, go, Karthik. You can cross it. So we're, we're going to we're, we're, we're going to go cross this. I'm just going to take the catheter off gently, and leave it at the level of the bifurcation. Let yeah. Karthik cross it. And Rami was very particular and very good. Rami, when you when you talked to us about the your choice of wires in crossing these lesions, right? And yeah, absolutely. I think this is like a lesion that's there's your there, there's a high risk for embolization. Right. And so you, when you cross, you want to cross softly and gently. You don't want to really force it. There you go. Uh, that looks like it just went up the right yep. path. Yep. So I'm just going to now just track this up, and we're going to switch out for a super core wire, right? So yeah. let's get a super core. And Rami, uh, as far as our sheet sizes, we both have decided on going with eight French sheets. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you know I, and, and one of the reasons is the, kind of the options of this kind of lesion. First of all, everyone, let's talk a little bit about hep, uh, our anticoagulation status. So in, in preparation, we got the CT. Uh, in, in terms of our anticoagulation, we went with heparin uh, at 5,000. And, and, now, and now, as far as planning of the case, we want to talk about the different options that we have when, when we go ahead and, and, and take care of these patients. Walk this out, please. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we were, we were actually planning this case, we came up with uh, a number of different potential treatment options. Uh, one was to use an endologix device, which would require bilateral access Ray. in the femorals. Ray, Nick. Uh, a 16 French access on one side, a 7 French access on the opposite oh, side, it. and we would have to snare a wire over that aortic bifurcation Watch. and position and, and, and deploy an endovascular stent graft to treat this. So that's one option. I think the downside with that option is that you have to stent into the aortic bifurcation and into the iliacs. And it's a large access, 16 French. Um, the other option, mm -hmm. uh, if we have, we actually, I don't know if you can see the back table here. We actually have a number of different options mm -hmm. on the table mm -hmm. uh, here. Thank but we know. actually have an endurance stent graft. Uh, we picked a iliac limb to the endurance 
which is a 16 millimeter diameter endurant limb that measures 82 uh, millimeters in length. Just a uh, so it's eight centimeters long. Uh, and that's teeth. something that I've used to treat these kind of lesions in the past, especially when you're dealing with a small caliber aorta. Uh, that way you don't have too much mismatch. Uh, for example, we mentioned here that the proximal aorta in Farinally was 14 millimeters, so the 16 millimeter stent graft would be appropriately sized. Again, the downside to the endurant uh, limb would be that it would be a uh, 12 mm -hmm. French delivery system. Yes. So uh, thinking about patient safety as, as, as a number one, uh, we want to try to minimize the access uh, vessel, uh, si access size, uh, minimize the French size of the access so that we can minimize the risk to the patient. Um, well, I mean, if you can also, uh, well, for, first of all, uh, I apologize for not uh, introducing well, you earlier. I've uh, I totally forgot that you were going to be in, in the room today. But again, thank you for, for, for joining us. Uh, but again, Good. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, two graphs so far, both of them with options for uh, for iliac limbs. Mm -hmm. Can you can you speak a little bit about uh, why we would want to or uh, why we would want to include those? So I think I think I think I think, I think in, if this lesion involved the aortic bifurcation no, no, no. or was really okay. close to the aortic bifurcation, then I think the endologics mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, or if you were dealing with uh, an aortic lesion plus iliac mm -hmm. disease, that could also potentially make sense. Another technique is to double barrel. So you put an aortic stent, like a like a VBX, mm -hmm. into the aorta, like and then you can do kissing iliac stents in that kind of situation. Um, the Medtronic iliac the limb yeah. would just be used for the inferenal aorta. Uh, because this is a small caliber inferenal aorta, a 16 millimeter iliac limb that measures 8 centimeters. Aorta, even though it was designed for the iliac. And then the two, the two other options would be to use an 11 millimeter VBX, which we can then flare proximally if need be, or a 13 millimeter uh, Viabon. The problem with the, the Viabon is we have to basically use a, uh, it's a larger caliber access. Again, it's a, I think tw it has to go through 12 French. The, the 13 millimeter Viabon has to go through a 12 French axis, similar to the Medtronic limb. Yep. And uh, it comes in five centimeters, seven and a half centimeters, and 10 centimeters. So probably in this scenario, we'd probably, if we were gonna do that, we'd probably use the seven and a half centimeter version of that stent. So, so would you consider I, using I mean, the, uh, oh, sorry. I, no, no, no problem. I, I mean, I, I think this is very important because I think that a couple of things that, that are pointed out is when do you go with what? And I think that's important for yeah. this. The cardio, you know, vascular surgery is, is so, you know, abreast in terms of you working with aortics and working with this and their thought process is so clear. That's the reason why we wanted to bring uh, the multidisciplinary approach in, in order to be able to teach because, you know, take Rami's expertise, uh, you know, and, and, and use that expertise for us to understand how to plan these cases. You know, a lot of times you look at this lesion as a cardiologist and you say to yourself, oh, it's a balloon stand, I'm going to balloon it in and out. But there's a lot of nuances. And I think the first nuance, I think more important than even choosing devices is actually doing the axial imaging. And I think Rami's point should not be bypassed or, or should not be glossed over earlier on because angiographically it looks like calcium. You know, it looks it looks like a, a calcified lesion, possibly a little bit of calcium. But clearly, if you look at the CAT scan, uh, Twinkle, do you have that CAT scan in a in a manner where we can look at it closely? Because I want Rami to just show this. Um, uh, can you scroll it and stuff? Because I think Rami yeah. can talk a little bit about the calcium and I'm excuse me about the the calcium as well as the soft plaque yeah. while we do the quick IVUS and then we can compare that to the IVUS. So Rami, can you also comment? Uh, sorry, can I just, just, uh, Rami, if, if you can also just uh, also comment on the choice of imaging, but the CTA and MRA, and when yeah. you would go with either one. Sure, I think CTA is is preferable. Here is the CTA, which you can see. Uh, you can Ready? see that the, the inferior aorta, what it, what it measures, and then you can see the area. This is actually not the area of most severe um, exactly occlusion. The the, the, the luminal diameter. In the area of most, where it's most severely stenosed, was about two millimeters in diameter. Um, the CT ready? Uh, really helps you characterize the lesion. So you can see the 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 vessel wall calcification. You can see the mural thrombus or soft plaque there, uh, and it really does help you characterize the lesion best. Uh, MRA is useful in patients with perhaps chronic kidney disease. Uh, where contrast may be relatively contraindicated, uh, but it doesn't really show you all the plaque characteristics the same way that a CTA would, in my opinion. Um, so CTA is certainly preferable to, to MRA, but I think both both are, are useful. Uh, MRA is good uh, in terms of identifying 
the lesion, the degree of stenosis, uh, measuring the proximal and distal aorta. If you're going to go with an MRA, I would encourage you to add IVIS. At least IVIS will give you some of those details that you can pick up on CT. It will give you the luminal measurements accurately. It will help define the characteristic of the stenosis, uh, such as thrombus, uh, plaque, soft plaque, uh, mixed morphology plaque, etc. So I think if you can't get a CTA for, for one reason or another, intravascular ultrasound is, is a very useful adjunct uh, when doing these kind of cases, which we're going to show. There you go. So, guys, can you change it from outside? Give us more gain, please, or depth, or whatever you want. You know, <clears throat> so, 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 Raman, I think that's very important uh, points, again, like you said, and I think we usually use CT for these cases unless there's a creatinine issue, then we can do time of flight MR followed by IVIS. But generally speaking, I, I think that's, that's the approach. But here you think with the IVIS, you're going to be able to see more. We're just, uh, Karthik is just making some adjustments uh, with the IVIS so we can get a good picture to show all of you. Can you go live on the IVIS, guys, for us so we can show the IVIS? All right, you want to come? Or, or do you want to do a pullback? Okay, okay, Flora. So we're doing a quick pullback here with the IVIS. So you can see the renal vein right there. So that's, we know we're at the level of the renal arteries, essentially. We're just infrarenally now. So here you're starting to see some of the uh, uh, characteristics of the aorta. You can see some calcification in the aortic wall. And as we kind of come down here, we're going to start seeing some, some luminal narrowing. Now you're actually seeing the outer calcium with some mural thrombus mm. in the aortic wall. And then now you can see where the aorta really gets narrow here. So it's basically around the catheter. Basically. So I, I measured it two millimeters on CTA, and that's roughly the diameter of the catheter. Uh, and then here, now you're starting to see that it's opening again. So at its narrowest, we're roughly two millimeters in diameter. And again, you're, you're getting a better sense of the plaque characteristics. ACT? And you can actually measure this ACT too. Is what? Okay. All right. So now you, this, they, this is the bifurcation of the aorta right there. We just saw Perfect. It. So let me just make sure our sheet didn't come back, which I don't think it did. And yeah. so what we're going to do is we're going to just walk this out in the meantime. And uh, so we were talking about different treatment options. Um, I think a bare metal stent would be a give mistake me a dial here. Give me a dilator, guys. i got to send this up. Yeah, a bare metal this stent would be a mistake here. I, I would certainly use a covered stent, <coughs> and I would use one of the options that we outlined. Um, we chose to use the VBX here uh, for, for a number of reasons. One, it offers a lot of flexibility in terms of sizing. Uh, we can taper it uh, by by using various balloon diameters. Which which uh, size that, uh, have we decided again? We went with the 11. You could have gotten the go with the 80 XL, but it doesn't matter. You still need an eight sheet. So we went with 11, and uh, the the idea would be again. I think that's an important discussion, Rami, which I, yeah. I mean uh, that we should have, which is which is how much do you want to dilate this? Because the patient is a clotic, and I think that's very important to remember, guys. Remember the syndrome that you're treating. Right, but but remember re, remember the syndrome that you're treating. I got the shit. You remember the trend of the syndrome that you're treating. Let's get the DBA, you're treating right? claudication, so it's important to look at the pressure gradient. If you can show us the pressure gradient that we have, you have the the pressure across across the lesion, uh, and you can see here you have a, a lesional gradient. Our our common femoral pressure is about 80. Our aortic Except pressure the, uh, currently is zero because we 11, need to now fix 79. that, guys. So our aortic pressure is around 140 or so, I would assume, or 130 if my old eyes are not right. But uh, but you can see you have about a 50, 60 millimeter gradient. So with the 50, 60 millimeter gradient, um, I, I you know I I think that you you'd like to reduce this. No, it's zero. You just got. I don't have a pressure. Uh, I, I, I would like to reduce this as much as I can, but you, there's no reason to have a perfect result in these kind of lesions. In the old days, when, when I was trained, which is ancient, uh, what we used to do is we used to do balloon angioplasty testing. So we, 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 well, you know, at that time, all we had is the old uh, med, um, guidance graph, which we used to actually crack, crack the, uh, the handle to put in. Have you ever used that one? So the, the anchor graph. But, but, the, but the point yeah. is that I think, you know, back then we just used to balloon this and see how the, the lesion at, responded we'll as the lesion we'll responded back. and as the gradient got better if we didn't have That's recoil we just leave it with a balloon and i don't think there's anything wrong with that if you didn't have multiple significant recoil but if you do have significant recoil then the issue is going to be is 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 what is it uh that you have to treat with and back then we only had 
bare metal stents. Matter of fact, I remember when Dr. Yeah, Marin used to run our, our vascular course back in 2004, we actually had a, uh, a, 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 a case of, um, of this aortic done by back then our Dr. Caraccio. And Dr. Caraccio actually just put a bare metal stent and just reduced the gradient by about 50% and the panel said we were done. It was a beautiful case. So it's very similar, but now we have so much new technology. We have these wonderful stents. I'm, I'm just gonna put a little pressure on the groin here with these wonderful stents uh, it, it, uh, through which we can actually go ahead and, uh, and, and, uh, and achieve such great results. So the, the stent is now in. Obviously, it is, it is uh, reducing our gradients. So now it's important to find our renals. And uh, Rami, I mean, why don't we uh, take a picture here? You agree? Yep, I agree. All right, so we're going to just take a picture here. Uh, sir, can you wake up? Yeah, I, I want you to hold your breath for a second. Right, pull that back. Okay, I just want you to hold your breath. Yeah, that's an important point that Dr. Tadra is making. We're going to pull that above the, uh, the stent uh, Perfect. to make sure we can really see the renal. Sir, take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath, let it out, let it out. Now don't breathe, don't breathe, don't breathe, don't breathe. Go ahead. Yeah, centimeter as I thought, yeah. So you can see you can here, a bit. we have to go in a little bit. This, breathe normal, breathe normal, sir. So now we're gonna adjust again. You wanna make that a roadmap or you can just take another quick yeah. puff? We gotta make a quick puff, but yep. I think um, what I'm using actually is the bony landmark. I can see okay. the, the end plate oh, of right the uh, vertebral body. Yep. Exactly. So that's gonna be perfect. And then actually, uh, one second, may things just get adjusted? You're still a little long, huh? Like another half a centimeter or so. Right there. It's gonna shorten it too. So go ahead and let's just do, do a run there. Ready? Sir? Sir, take a deep breath. Let it all the way out. Yeah. Now don't breathe, don't breathe, don't breathe, don't breathe. Perfect. I think that's perfect. Breathe normally, sir. So you're, you right, can, it's clear. important that you're around uh, to keep these bowling landmarks and, and where you are, but very important now to hold the graph still. And you know, it's also nice to have an awake patient so you can see how they feel. Sir, the let me know how you feel. Okay, just relax. Don't no no movements. So the nice thing about the VBX is that you can actually adjust the size based on the number of atmospheres. So we're gonna take this. Yeah, go ahead. We'll just pause for a second. Pause. Let it expand. Yep. Yeah, Flora, save that. So one of the things that I don't like about the VBX is the, the balloon does shoulder quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're going to do is just let this adjust. Um, and then what we can do is actually advance the uh, balloon and then reinflate so that we're out of the iliac uh, so that we don't end up with the uh, iliac trauma there. Um, if I go up to four atmospheres, five, and then just let it stabilize there. If we wait, if we wait 30 seconds with this, that will, that will, that will expand. But you can see that's actually where the aorta is the most narrow. Let's go ahead and deflate. So the other important thing also is, is, to, is to see that you anchor the stent. And I think waiting four atmospheres will anchor the stent and make sure that the stent doesn't slide as the, balloon, as the balloon is now being pushed up. So it's very important now to obviously make sure that the stent doesn't slide. So we're going to rail yeah. the wire and we're, and we're going to go yeah, double negative. Make sure it's fully, fully, fully deflated. Exactly. Make sure it's fully deflated. And then we're going to slowly advance it up because you don't want that slent to slide up or down. Okay. So there you go. That's there you a go. beauty. Good. Now I, would, now I would go to take it to 10 at, even atmospheres. So remember, the aorta at that at that level is is larger than than our, our balloon. Still, yeah. So I think we should be okay, at least proximally as well. So yeah, I think 16. we should be okay. So again, we're we're it's a claudicant. We're just trying to re yeah, reduce yeah. the gradient. It's still hanging overhanging into the iliac. Sure. So we're going to go down again, and now we went up a little bit higher. So it should definitely be. And, and actually, this shows how much that uh, VBX shortened. Yeah. Proximally, we lost at least half a centimeter. Yeah. Um, so we're well below the renals now, and we're we're actually at a good, good, good place above. Yeah, mm. but again, it shows it shows the. I would go to. It's very interesting 14, because because on on the first image, you would it would almost make you inclined to choose a much shorter device. But this is a pretty significant amount of uh, foreshortening as we continue to yeah, play. Yeah, well, you have to account for that. You have to. There's actually, if you look at the packaging, there's a sizing sheet that you but, can. But look, this look is at the nominal reference. balloon, though, right? This, this is, is the eleven. Nominal. 
But remember, 14, remember, 14, Roman, 14. the aorta, the aorta measures 12, right? So, so this way, this is pretty much one to one. So you're not really going to go ahead and and have to post dilate this much, except distally, the aorta does dilate. So therefore, distally, you might have to post dilate a little bit. But again, very important. You know, Elizabeth's on top of it. She's watching the patient. He's starting to squirm. So yeah, when you hear these kind of squirming uh, movements 10, that 10. he has, but it stabilizes at 10. See little pain see so okay, so so it. yeah so when they have pain so guys at home i you saw that subtle movement that the patient did and it's and it's important to watch the patient especially when they're awake and the anesthesia when you have anesthesia in the or it's a totally different story but when you're a cardiologist and or radiologist or even a vascular surgeon working in a non-anesthesia setting it's very important to watch the patient's now. reactions a little bit of squirming he moved his hips when he was totally normal when we were going up, which clearly shows and that this might be an issue. Yeah, but, pain resolved too. Which again is, is showing that you're stretching the aorta, you were properly diagnosed, uh, I mean sized, and your diameter sizing was perfect. So now what we're gonna do is let the balloon come all the way down. I'm just gonna push the sheet up a little bit, yeah, right? I'm gonna slide it up over the, over the stent and into, and now I have access of the aorta. See, that's the key now. This is the key, and we teach this for iliac stenting, because you wanna have access across the stent in case you perf. We have it. So in case you perf, now you also have aortic occlusion balloons that go through eight French sheets, right? So I'm holding positive on the, on the, on the sheet as Dr. Guja is walking it out. So now, so now if, we, if God forbid we have a rupture aorta, we can use an aortic occlusion balloon. We can use whatever we want, and we don't have to track it through our freshly laid stent. So at this stage, we're not going to give up our access except across the aorta. We're going to take a picture. And I, now my pressure has come back, and my pressure is, again, showing that it's pretty much even. So we're going to do a quick DSA. Lovely. Yeah. Sir, sir, take a deep breath. Deep breath in. Let it all the way out. <clears throat> now, don't breathe. Don't breathe. Don't breathe. Okay, so it's definitely a, a much better. We don't know. Just, we'll inject from both ends soon, but I mean, I, that's a pretty, a pretty good uh, picture. I don't think it's a sheet. Uh, the question is, should we do an IVUS or should we? Should, uh, let's uh, get a better picture, I think. Let's get a better picture. Okay, I'll walk the sheet back. We'll inject through both guys. I'm going to leave it right here, and we can inject both. Okay. If you want to just a there. little bit not fully opposed to the awesome I agree. I agree with you there. Ready, guys? DSA? Oh, it looks Sir, lovely. deep breath in. Let it all the way out. Don't breathe, don't breathe, don't breathe. Inject. Yeah, it's a little not opposed on the, on the, well, it's hard to tell. Yep. Distally. Okay. Distally? I would. Both, yeah, both. Yeah, pretty proximal. I would get, a, a if bit. you're going to post it, I would just do a 12, 20 <clears throat> balloon, something short. That doesn't shoulder very much. Remember, we underinflated. We underinflated distally. I think it should be posted distally. I think proximally, it looks like you're one to one. Distally, you're, you, because it was what, 12, 11 millimeters proximally, yeah. right? And distally, it was over about 13 millimeters. So I would it probably like, post at the level yeah. of the iliac and then oppose that so it doesn't migrate down. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't think migration is going to be an issue, but no, I, think I, that, I think that the. Uh, it's not opposed at the distal. Let's do a quick IVUS for teaching purposes. Let's do an IVUS so we can see how it looks. What's our gradient now? Zero, right? Zero, uh, let's zero both, guys. Zero both. Maybe just about 10. I mean, it's, it's markedly improved as one would expect. I think Robin's right. It's going to be 10. Or maybe not because it looks like one is, they're both not zeroed. OK, now? Zero. OK, now? Yeah, we're, we're plenty fine. We're not zeroed, guys. Zero again. We have that 12 balloon. Okay, l let me let me do the way I was taught. I want to I want to read triple zeros. Wait. All right, good. All right, ready? Now go. Still not zeroed. Any particular reason why we can't zero in a cardiac cath lab? <laughs> Could we also pull up the, hemo the hemodynamics so we can see it on our live screen here? Yeah, show well. us the hemodynamics, guys. So let's go with the IVUS. 
while they work out the zeroing, we're just going to do a quick eye for strategic purposes to see how this looks, especially at the proximal uh, area to see whether we're fully uh, opposed or not and distal. I'm just going to go very slow. See whether we can see. See, so there's the stent. There's the junction, right? Yeah. Maybe flare it out a little bit. Got to flare it out. So that's good. And then this is now, you know, now uh, let's walk the, uh, okay, now let's do a pullback here. Yeah, it looks fine. Record, guys. I think proximal, you're good. Yeah, yeah we're really good proximal. Now, as the distal is probably okay, but it's worth flaring. Well, it's probably so well anchored, right, Rami, yeah. in the middle. And again, I think this is the discussion I want all of you, all of you to think about. Yeah. Because you know, you know, this guy, this gentleman is is a Claudican. The gentleman, the lady doesn't really matter. He's a they're Claudicans. So you've taken the the gradient. Definitely have a better waveform. Whether we're going to fix the zero or not, is a different story. But but I I, I think at this stage you may want to just make sure as long as the graft is not migrating uh, and has no potential to migrate, I think you may stop here. I don't think it's unreasonable. Yep. Also, just just the record, I, Dr. Goodrich, I think your mic I just is touch off. Touch it. Like, you can turn your mic let's on. Let's get that balloon. I think this will be more wonderful comments yeah. we need to hear for the audience. Yeah, I think, I think, Robin, I think there's a little bit let's of a disagreement. Good, Dr. Gujo wants to uh, post dilate proximally. Me and Dr. Tadros feel proximally is good. Do you feel and, it? Uh, uh, can you hear now? Since, yes, yes. Now we can know. hear you. So I think, uh, based on the IVOS, I feel like actually the proximal is not more opposed. I think the distal is pretty well opposed, actually. Um, if you actually look at it right now, the sizing of the proximal, you see there is a yeah, I mean, I we can it. put a chroma flow and see. Yeah, I mean, it 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 looks like on, on the Android there's like a a, a tiny sliver of a second. shelf of going yeah. around. But I guess to Rami and Dr. Krishnan's point is that is is that of any overall clinical significance at this point, uh, which well, I think would be you. a good point to then sure bring up not... the uh, next okay, topic good. of discussions. Uh, yeah, Rami, if uh, after we're getting ready to post dialed, if you can maybe talk about like the long-term patency that we've seen. More, Yep, the various uh, like uh, graft <laughs> options, though. Bef uh, before we before we do that, I just want to show here. It's very important that Dr. Tadros and I actually put the balloon inside the stand a little bit because of the shoulders of these balloons. Yeah. Uh, for the cardiologists in the yeah. world, I mean, we're so spoiled. Ideal, we're spoiled by these coronary yeah, balloons, right. which ended and, and which ended everything See, perfectly. So so. A little bit more. Peak. Yep, I am. I'm There's going to be a lot of overhead. There you go. Okay. That's so good right there. Yep. There you go. So I think it's important to remember that these balloons actually will overhang even with that much. You see the overhang. Yeah. That's good. I think pain, pain, yeah, pain. There you go. So again, a subtle movement is all you need to tell you that the gentleman is having pain. Save that, Flora. Save that, please. And and I think I think now it's important Flora. to do whether they want to do proximally or not. And I'm going to just hold it. a sheet for them. Right there is good. And uh, yeah, we, and look at Dr. Tartar is well below uh, the actual marker. Yep. And pulling it back, actually, so to make sure that there's no trauma to the aorta, proximal, because the last thing you'd like is a proximal dissection here. You know, the last thing you need is a proximal dissection. That's good. That's perfect. Perfect. Yep. So now okay. we've actually yeah, satisfied all parties involved, right? Flora save, please. And I think to answer your question, um, um, uh, Raman, I think patency here is not going to be a problem at all. I mean, I yeah. think, uh, you know, there's Rami... No, unfortunately, there's no data on isolated aortic stents, um, but but we know from from the iliac data Rami. that the, the covered stents do better uh, in the uh, for aortic iliac what occlusive disease. I'm just saying, Mike, can't we zero it? No, oh, okay. it's better. But go ahead. Covered stents do better. Obviously, COBES trial is... COBES, yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't have any data on this, and you know, it, but 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 if you if you take any credence into the larger the vessel, larger, better, better the flow, yeah. better the outflow, higher the pressure through the through that. Once I mean, it, yeah. un unlikely to have any issues going right. on. I would think that it's at least comparable to iliac stenting with covered stents, probably better, uh, because we rarely use this di diameter in the in the iliac circulation. Right. I mean, this is a pretty big stent. This is a 12 millimeter stent. Um, and so in the common iliacs, you might use a, you know, a 10 millimeter stent. Um, so I think that the patency is going to be at least, at least 80% at five years, if not better. <clears throat> yeah. Now, if you just go around the room, what's, what's everyone's choice for uh, anti-platelet therapy for this patient afterwards? I honestly think aspirin alone is adequate. 
um, for this such a large stent. It's a covered stent. So if you kind of translate the data from aorta by femoral bypass yep. or uh, you know yeah, iliofemoral bypass, pressures are equalized. The the uh, typically aspirin is adequate. Uh, certainly, if the patient has other risk factors, um, doing dual antiplatelet therapy for a month is totally fine, and then transition back to aspirin. So let's take a quick picture so here. So now the pressures are equal. Well, they are, they are a little bit lower than they were. That could be because of a little bit of vagal uh, or sleep apnea, one or the other. Ready, guys? Let's inject from the above and below. So deep breath, hold. Breathe normally. So I mean, I mean, I mean, I think Dr. Tondra's point is so good there because if you think about it, as a cardiologist, we would just go ahead and put them on Plavix and aspirin together, right? Take a deep breath, let it all the way out. Okay, breathe normally, breathe normally. Deep breath, deep breath, let it all the way out. Don't breathe, don't breathe, don't breathe, don't breathe. Mm. It looks great. I wouldn't do any more. Yeah, we're done. So, so now you can see we have a beautiful result. We have a one-to-one, -one, uh, pretty much, placement above and below. Let's just look at the uh, distal aorta mm -hmm. yeah. at level 15. Let's yep. just shoot that at a different angle. Yep, I agree. There's yeah. a little something there. Watch your, watch your knees, Ray. So let's shoot from below, the guys. It's probably the, yeah. the vagal branch. That's probably what I it agree. looks like. I agree, but let's be 100%. Sure. Yeah, so you know, you can see a double shadow that we all picked up in the distal aorta. So we're going to shoot from below here. And just to make sure, I'm just going to hold this here at this level. And we're going to do a hand injection with high pressure, Karthik Guja strength here. So we'll take a picture. Here we go. Don't break it. Looks like a little bit of retro. No, I think it's more of a, uh, there's a branch there. If you've seen the I, I see it right there, yeah. I want a more view, right? The pressure's been 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 okay, so there's a branch there's, yeah. right behind. Mm -hmm. I see it. Did we close it? Is a question. Which we probably maybe a little bit of uh, contrast just leaking around the graph, but that's not. what I think too. Let me just mag up here a little bit different. You guys should move that hemodynamic tracing out of the way so the audience can see well. Okay. Uh, can we move that hemodynamic tracing out of the way on the screen, please? Ready, Cindy. Inject. Do that again. Yeah, that was too fast. Breathe normally. Yeah, I think that's the branch coming down, Rami. You see over there? The yeah, 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 I do. I just want to make. Yeah, I agree. Before I leave. I agree. Before I leave the office hours. <laughs> and then we'll like no, don't eject from above. Also. Well, rock solid so far. So, uh, sir. And we're not but, tremendously oversized there. Take a deep there, breath so in. Perforating. Let it all the way out. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't swallow. Now. The branch, right? The branch, that's what yeah, I feel too. Breathe yeah. normally? Yeah, you can see the branch now. I think what's happening yeah. is we have a little bit of reflux around the graft, and it's filling that branch that we saw in the previous angio. So I think, I think but the, the point I was trying to make is that, you yeah, know, what Dr. Tadros was saying, I think here aspirin right? is yeah, yeah. phenomenal. I mean, if you don't there's want to put them on Plavix, no other there. reason. Yeah. I think, it's I think right with this much flow like through the aorta, like I think you're phenomenal. If you do have any issues post, I think what so you, you need to do is uh, is go ahead at this stage. If you From your angiograms, you're not seeing anything. You might have to get a CAT scan if the patient is hemodynamically compromised in any way. But here... From all this look, and we have an anticoagulation with an ACT of 300 without any exactly uh, uh, drop in uh, hemodynamics. I think we're going to be fine. We are now going to do post runoffs of the foot. Um, just do and and you want to do a caudal? Yeah, let's just do caudal. one last caudal. Oh, caudal, do a caudal. Sorry. Let's see. We've, uh, we're always very, very cautious when we're, we're doing aeroiliac cases with calcific vessels. Ready? And so we just. Sir, wanna... deep breath in. Let it all the way out. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Don't breathe. Don't breathe. Don't swallow. Don't talk. Don't breathe. Inject. Why is the image shitty? Breathe normally. Oh. Breathe. Sorry. Okay, one more time. <laughs> Just inject from below, Carthy. Yeah, I got it. Okay, Go ahead. Deep, deep breath like in. Contracting out or something. Like that. Let it out. Don't breathe. Don't breathe. Don't breathe. Don't breathe. Just bowel gas. Yes, I agree. That's just bowel gas. Okay, breathe this normal. Is good. I'm happy yeah, with that, always, guys. Yeah. I think this is good. 
There's bowel gas back there. I don't see yeah. any area of extravasation. And the pressures are completely equalized. So. Yeah. It can be confusing sometimes. It can, yeah. my goodness. And I think, like Dr. Tartar said, you want to make a diagnosis in the in the OR or in the cath lab before you Let, leave. Let's talk about that. You know? So what what would be our our bailout option here? Yep. I say there was a <coughs> injury at that distal aorta just above the aortic bifurcation. To convert it into well, a seat up. So yeah, exactly. I think you have, you have two potential options. One is to do kissing iliac stents from both sides yep. to raise the uh, bifurcation somewhat. The problem with that is you can still get guttering yep. around the two stents uh, when you have a a double barrel stents like that. You can still get guttering, but probably if you inflate enough proximally into the aortic stent a regular run. Uh, and, and you use a long enough uh, kissing stent uh, of DSA. and you reverse anticoagulation, that prob probably would be okay. Of DSA, uh, um, DSA, if you have access to run. a device like an Endologix, that would be the more definitive uh, type of fix. or an, an EVAR device where you you know you basically create a new neo aortic bifurcation with a standard EVAR device. So I think do a run. what I would probably do in this situation so where we, we don't have the endologic device uh, immediately available, no, I would probably do both legs. double barrel no, you're stents. You're not going to be able to know because the pressure is uh, so into high. the into the area. What would you do, PK? Double I, barrel I stents? would probably do you know you know honestly at this stage yeah. I think you have such a great seal distal in the aorta. Yeah. Uh, obviously then I think a it. double barrel uh, with the iliac yeah. limbs probably would be easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah but yeah. at the same time I was just going to comment uh, to the cardiologist and the out there and the radiologist you know this is where your collaboration with vascular surgery is very important. Once you have a perforation of the aorta, you clearly, clearly want to have multidisciplinary approach if, if you're unable to control it and you want to make a joint decision. I think that's very, very important. It's a joint decision because experience and understanding of how things are are very important uh, when this happens. You don't want to call after you've done 20 things, ready for run, and, and, and now you're in real trouble and the patient is inject and the patient's not doing well, you don't want to call at this stage. You want to make sure that you have a joint decision made, and we're just making sure that we have an embolized into the foot. And we're going to do a DSA at this level because of all the level of the aortic plaque. One uh, downside that I did not mention with the VBX uh -huh. is that it can't be clamped. Right. So yeah. in, oh, the, that's right. in the yeah. event that you have to do something open, uh, something I'm surgical, this back. the VBX, Look because up. it's self-expanding, if you clamp it, it's going to actually crush. Okay. And you're going to basically have to either explant that stent or do DSA something below with it. The knee? Uh, here we have we have at least a centimeter below the renals. Yeah, in the event we had to do something them. open, we actually have a centimeter below the renals where we could right. clamp. Mm -hmm. um, if we use a self-expanding stent, either a Viabon or an or like the Medtronic limb, those are self-expanding, and those you can actually clamp with something like a Fogarty Hydrogrip clamp. So that's one other consideration for the, for the surgeons that might be uh, watching which is, and, and for the cardiologist to have a discussion prior to putting it in you know you want to make sure that everybody's on board with if anything goes uh, awry and you want to make sure there's joint decision making see the amount of decision uh, discussion we had here i mean we work we work so many years together that it, we, uh, we really understand one another and i think we work collaboratively but i think it's important to have that discussion because you know dr tadros and his team had everything prepared i mean they, we talked about you know the medtronic limb we talked about the uh, the uh, the viabond we talked about so i'm sure he talked about surgical options with dr guja i mean there's so many things that we talked we talked about shockwave therapy whether we need to or not that we the cats can't change our mind so i think you know this kind of collaboration is incredibly important and now we've, we have achieved a beautiful result with this patient and i think we're, we're all done here rami right yep. and thank, thank you very you. much sir thank you nice for your job. time thank you and uh and uh, and uh, we want to wish on behalf of dr tadros thank myself you. Uh, uh, you know, our, our fellows, and thank you, for <laughs> you know, <laughs> Liz, Karthik, and obviously Vishal, uh, who's, uh, who's uh, you know, we're taking a little time off, well-deserved. Uh, we we want to go ahead and uh, thank all of you for joining us Liz, this year. You. And we will Ray. see you, we, we will see you uh, in the new year for a uh, for another great year of teaching. And uh, so we wish you all a happy holidays, happy new year, happy, healthy, and prosperous. So take care, everyone, and thank you. Nice we need to do much. the runoff on the other side. Mm -hmm. Up and over to the runoff. 2022. <laughs>